Hi, everyone. Um, I'm going to take this time and this opportunity. Uh, we're seeing a lot of people using video uh, conferencing and things like Zoom to present uh, meetings, different things to the public. I had an idea to present something that um, I often get a lot of questions about. People find it really hard to follow along for council meetings, and they find it uh, more difficult when it's specifically something like... Um, uh, using the agenda online and why we're go jumping from one item to another. Uh, what does consent mean? What does communications mean? Uh, oftentimes the mayor is moving really quickly, so we don't understand what's actually happening. And in fact, sometimes I've had delegates or people come to speak to an item or come to watch for an item, sit there, uh, the item comes, goes, gets passed, and they're still sitting there for hours because they don't understand that the item has been dealt with. So I'm going to take this opportunity uh, now that we're all at home. Uh, this will be posted on my Facebook page. Uh, please send me back any feedback, any other questions you might have. Obviously, I'll be moving still at a pace that I'm used to, so I might not get your direct questions or might not be exactly what you might ask. So I'm looking for more input and I'm hoping over the next week or two, I'll also be putting out more of these. But the first one is basically <clears throat> how to follow along a council meeting, following the agenda that's online uh, while you're watching either on Kojiko or live streaming. So we'll start um, as I um, will go to uh, basically the city's website. When you come to the city's website, sometimes it's pretty complicated, convoluted, but um, for me, the easiest way to do it, and you can probably bookmark this, would probably be a good way to go. Start at City Hall, go down to City Council meetings. Once you're in this area, you'll see um, a lot of different you know, subcategories, but this middle area is sort of the key area. So if you wanna go to the different committee meetings, City Council, you hit Agenda. And now you come up to city council. So the first one is the meeting that's coming up on May 4th, your streaming options, the different years uh, here off to the side. Um, if you scroll down, there's a whole bunch of new specific information about um, the uh, call in and, and the way we're co um, conducting meetings now. But I'm gonna scroll down, I'm gonna use uh, Monday, February 24th meeting as an example, because it was probably the most, um, uh, most common agenda is what we would see it before sort of the online meetings and things like that. So if you open, um, you'll see that the agenda will go online uh, 10 days before the actual meeting. The Friday, a week before, the agenda will hit the website. The Friday before, just three days before, you'll see additional information hit the website. This additional information usually has a lot of things like um, who the delegates uh, will be, who will be speaking to it, if there's any extra items. And it usually includes communications, uh, the bylaws and the minutes. So when you go to um, either one of these, is still downloading. So you have access and you can bring these up and you can bring these up as you're watching uh, Kojiko from home or uh, the live stream, which is also on the website here. And um, this, uh, th the what you'll see, um, on the website and, and I'll show you, I'll probably do another session where um, the live streaming on the website has really come a long way. Um, really, really useful tool and it's something that, um, uh, you know, the, with the new city hall, we were actually able to get something really good up and running uh, and it's really useful tool. So I don't know why it's taking so long, but of course some of these agendas are quite large. So. So we finally have it up. So this is the, the full agenda, 354 pages. What you'll see here, this is a supplementary. So this is what comes out three days before the meeting. So on Monday, February 24th, we had an in-camera meeting starting at 5.30. Um, people oftentimes ask me why, um, you know, what, why we came in late. Sometimes our in-camera meetings will run past, and that's why sometimes we'll come back into public session at 6.15, 6.30. So as you scroll down, you'll go past the names of the councillors, and then there's the order of business. So um, the first line tells you who the, um, the mayor will be in the absence of the mayor. So in, in February, it was Councillor Sleeman. Uh, then there's a national anthem. Disclosure of pecuniary interest is if anybody, either themselves or a family member, their wives or kids, uh, are in any way tied to any of the agenda items where they may be making money, usually tied to their jobs. Um, adoption of the minutes, the minutes are also included in this package. 
notices of proclamations are, you know, the different things, nutrition month, Easter seals, those types of things. Uh, moves into committee of the whole. Uh, so this is sort of when it starts getting into the technical aspect. The communications package is basically any communications that has been sent to administration uh, that we need to know about. So what you'll see, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually open another window here so I can keep the agenda open. Um, so what you'll see is um, once there's the minutes that you go through, and then here's a communications item. So the communications items, well, that was from the last meeting. Um, so all the minutes are there. And, and I mean, if you're interested in seeing how uh, something passed in a previous meeting, you could go and see that. So for example, Brownfield redevelopment uh, moved by Councilor Borland, seconded by Councilor Costante. If it says carried, it means it was unanimous. What you might see sometimes is they'll it'll say carried, uh, voting uh, uh, against was uh, Councillor Holt and Sleeman or something like that. Carried means it was unanimous and it would specify if it was if it was not. Um, so once you get through the minutes, you'll, you'll go through a few rounds of the minutes and then you come to the correspondence or communications as it's often called. These were things, so the Ontario Ministry of Children, Community and Social Services, the survey, everything that's on communications, there's very few actionable items you'll see most of the time it's note and file so basically for us counselors and for the general public to know that something had come across from the windsor essex county health unit recommendation or resolution on healthy smiles ontario funding so and it, and who it went to so the community development health commissioner uh, at the city of windsor who was yelling a pain every once in a while you'll see council direction uh, is requested so this was um invitation to participate in the large urban mayors uh, caucus of Ontario advocacy fund so five thousand dollars so you'll need a direction or a motion from council to support that for the most part you'll get a lot of site plan uh, applications uh, again we don't vote on them these are just to know that they are going through that process and where they are so if you are, if there's projects going on in your ward, you'll know that they're going on from the different things. And then you'll, you'll, you'll scroll through them as you go through them. You'll see all the letters from different ministries, from different, from the health department, um, different memos from, from within, and then the planning applications that are all very um, standard. So when we go back to the agenda, the communications package, um, you know, uh, the mayor will say on communications and we'll say, you know, we may have questions, we may offer direction. Also on communications are 7.1, 2, 3, and 4, all the way to 7. So everything with a 7 is part of communications. So these are just reports um, for information in essence. So you'll see summary of hotline issues, implementation of audit recommendations, um, appraisal report. So these are oftentimes um, reports from the BIAs, from the, the tunnel, from the airport, different things like that. Then we get into consent agenda. And a lot of people have a lot of questions. So you'll wire things, certain things on consent. You'll notice that the original um, agenda that it comes out a week and a half before, almost everything is on consent. And as you go down, you'll see that it's all on consent. And then there is the heritage designation, um, PWC, and then a couple of other items. I usually, the clerks put everything on consent unless there are delegations. So when there are delegations, you'll notice that some of the reports that were on consent, now, if you scroll down, are under delegations. And there's a few reports that people were there to speak to. But for those that are not, they're on consent. So many of these items, so everything that comes from consent committee reports, we have dealt with at the different various standing committees. So the transit um, advisory committee meeting, these are the minutes, uh, they just go up to the different, uh, through standing committee to, through to council. Most of these have seen at least five councillors' eyes on them before, if not more, because it could have originated from, a, from um, an advisory committee first and then it went to standing committee so that's why there's not a lot of discussion on a lot of these issues now if something for example um is contentious or something where there are going to be um different uh 
uh, groups coming to advocate, you'll usually see that under delegations. So when they come to the consent agenda, a lot of times a mayor will ask any questions on the consent agenda. We may offer up um, you know, one or two questions on the consent agenda just to um, you know, not pull it off the consent agenda, just to have some quick questions. Otherwise, the consent agenda, if it passes, everybody is noted as supporting everything on the consent agenda. You can also ask to pull something off if you have a lot of questions or if you'd like to have people speak to it. So once you scroll through, and sometimes you'll actually see us add things to the consent agenda. For example, if you scroll down and there is a delegation on, um, let's say the Windsor Accessibility Advisory Committee annual report. So there's, um, you know, Seifu uh, from the Diversity Committee member, he may be there, sometimes you'll see just for questions. Um, you know, if there are no questions and we've had, you know, potentially we've talked to administration about it, we will move that uh, report onto consent. And a lot of it is just to sort of move uh, the agenda and move the meeting uh, along quicker. So you'll see that there's a lot of reports there often are on on consent uh consent will come up and then so the mayor will say on the consent agenda okay a motion to approve the consent agenda uh we'll get the motion we'll get the second we'll get the vote and then all of a sudden everything up until 8.25 is all approved because it was on the consent agenda then it comes for request for deferrals referrals or withdrawal so if there's an item, for example, where you know a resident has called me and said, you know, I just noticed that this item is on uh, council meeting uh, Monday, but I haven't had a chance to talk to my neighbors, and I want to, you know, we're against uh, the road widening or the changes to parking or whatever it may be, they can ask me to ask for a deferral. So at this point, I may raise my hand and say, um, you know, on item. Uh, I don't know, uh, you know, exemption noise bylaw for nighttime construction work. Um, you know, the residents haven't had time to consider it and have their say, can we, can I defer this to the next meeting? And then uh, for the most part, deferrals are generally accepted. Usually the ward counselor will have a reason for it. Um, and that item will be deferred to the next meeting. And then when it be, uh, be, be between this meeting and the next meeting, the residents, the ward counselor and the clerk's department have the opportunity to reach out to the necessary people to get more people involved. And you can actually get more people to become delegates and come back to speak to that, that item. If there are no requests for deferrals, we move on to the presentations and delegations. So usually you'll see uh, presentations if it's someone from um, the city or from PwC, presentations are a 10 minute maximum. Delegations are members of the public, they get five minute maximum. So the Heritage Resi uh, Recognition Awards were something that the mayor handed out. Um, Ms. Baker from the Development Heritage Standing Committee was um, sort of uh, being the MC. Uh, we invited the different uh, recipients up to receive their awards. I believe there were seven or eight um, that night. Uh, so that was a special uh, presentation. Then the next one was the PwC uh, audit summary. So our partners at um, PricewaterhouseCooper will come in, do a presentation, then be available for questioning. They'll do their five or 10 minute presentation. Then we open it up to questions. And the way it works procedurally is that counselors have the options and the ability to ask the presenters or the delegates questions at that point. Once those questions are done, we then ask questions of administration. Um, oftentimes, and, and it depends on, uh, it'll be the mayor's call, if later we have a question for a delegate after we've gone to administration, technically at that point, we, we don't have the opportunity to ask um, the delegates, but the mayor may allow it and just sort of loosening up the rules and allow us to go back and ask a delegate a question. So once you'll see 10.2 may be finished, then it goes on to delegations. Um, for this one, there was Diane Bradford from the Trauma Center for Vision Zero. Um, also the uh, scooters, um, Ms. Bradford was also there to talk about the need for helmets, for example, for the scooter um, motion, and then it, uh, and so on. So 8.16 was the accessibility committee. Once those are done, we move on to the regular business item. So these are things that cannot go on consent because of legislated uh, rules. So it may be things in the Planning Act or something like that, um, that don't allow us to put this on consent. These items will come up. 
you know, the mayor will say, okay, 11.1 um, grant request, then there'll be questions. Uh, there may not be any questions. There might, we may move for direction. When the mayor calls for direction, somebody will raise their hand and they'll actually make a motion. Now that motion is there to um, try to either promote or support one of the recommendations that came uh, from administration. Then um, the regular business items are done. Consideration of committee reports. These are all just um, the different reports from different meetings that we've had that we just accept. The bylaw section, this is again, um, this is sort of like, you know, making the sausage part. These are all the bylaws that came forward to have this meeting, uh, really the nuts and bolts of, you'll see that there's a bylaw section on every agenda because we need bylaws to say that we've met uh, what the rules were of the meeting, uh, move back into formal session. Notices of motion mean uh, counselors can stand up and, and put a motion on the floor uh, basically making a notice that at a subsequent meeting they will be putting this motion on the floor. You need notice before that that happens. If you want to do it the same day, you have to waive the rules. If you waive the rules, you need two-thirds, so you'll need seven counselors to agree to waive the rules, and then you can debate or discuss a motion on the floor that day. Um, that could be anything. You can bring, any counselor can bring any notice of motion forward. Um, it really depends on, on what you're trying to accomplish. Uh, then again, procedurally, reading of the bylaws. Petitions, uh, again, if you have petitions from your residents or something like that, this is a time to present them. Question period, you'll hear the term CQ, that's a council question. A lot of counselors will ask questions at this point. This gives direction to administration to come back with some sort of um, report generally that will you know, lay the groundwork for something like, um, you know, ask administration that uh, they prepare a report coming back with what uh, procedures and policies would be tied to uh, including alley lights as, um, part of infrastructure in our core area alleys. Uh, and then you vote on whether it's accepted or not, and then that gets put into the queue and uh, administration will be working on that report to come back at a future time. Uh, statements by members, uh, you'll hear uh, members of council stand up and you know talk about an event that may have happened on the weekend, something that may be coming up, a special day that may be coming up or a special meeting. Uh, you'll see here the meetings listed. Um, and then adjournment. So that's the, the the bulk of the agenda. And then, so I'll, I'll, let's go to, um, we'll do 11.1. .1. So when you're here on the agenda, if you use uh, the control F or command F function and do 11.1, .1, you'll see that um, there's five times where it comes up. So the first one is on the agenda. Um, oops, sorry. And then the second time, you'll see it that because it's a PDF and it's just finding anywhere where it says 11.1, .1, you may have to go through a few iterations before you get to this area where it says item number 11.1. .1. So Habitat for Humanity is uh, requesting a grant for development and permit fees for St. Luke. So the recommendation is that the request for Habitat for Humanity be approved. Um, that Habitat for Humanity be approved in addition for grants and waivers for on the permanent list. Um, and this is how you'll see a report broken down. The title, the references of who wrote the report, um, their contact information, what the recommendation is. You'll see either a recommendation to approve or deny or authorize, or sometimes it'll just say um, looking to counsel for direction. Then in the executive summary, there may be an explanation. There's usually a, a good background presented. Um, in this case, Habitat every time in the past has come forward asking for grants and council has always granted them. Uh, the problem for Habitat was that they always had to uh, put that cash forward to begin with. Whereas now by um, in the discussion area, uh, administration recognized that we have constantly been doing that and they've seen that housing is a priority and we want to support things like Habitat. We now put them on the permanent waiver list, which means they don't have to pay the development fees and the permit fees first and then get them reimbursed. They are just waived from the get-go. So for Habitat for Humanity, that's a cash flow difference of tens of thousands of dollars. So it's a real win for them. 
So this report uh, was a great report, supported unanimously. Um, and you'll see, so there's a discussion, there's always a risk analysis, then a financial matter section sort of breaking down what it means and how much, how much the cost will be, who they consulted with, uh, what the conclusion is, and then again, who approved it and who signed off on it. So, um, and then any appendices will be uh, letters or extra information either from Habitat or maybe from different departments. Um, so this is an ex this is a good uh, a good report to see how everything is broken down so you can follow along. Now, again, the only difference is is that when you're going through the meeting reports and you're going through a full agenda, um, we you have to understand that we are going through potentially what could be three, four, five, six, seven hour meeting. You know, my longest ever council meeting was 14 and a half hours, a budget meeting about four years ago. Um, those are really tough. So when it looks like we're going fast and really, you know, moving through the agenda quickly and it's hard to follow, it's because we're trying to get as much business done as possible. Um, when I chair the standing committee for planning, I try to make it as, as known as possible to the people in the audience, you know, where we're at, what happens if we did put something on consent and I do see a group in, in the audience who are waiting to speak to it or wanting to hear about it. I will say that, you know, it did pass and that, you know, you can go home now uh, and, and not to wait around. So um, that's the, the gist of it. Um, I know that, um, I know that you, um, you may have other questions or there may be other things that you wanted to see me explore or explain with the agenda. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do another video explaining how to follow along on the live stream. And so um, hopefully this one will give you an idea of how to follow along, bringing up the agenda, seeing where we're at, what the issues are. Um, but, you know, I want to reiterate this, and I've said this so many times to people when, when they reach out to me, if there's an issue that's coming up on the agenda, whether, um, you know, whether it's something in your neighborhood where um, they're changing the parking uh, restrictions on your street, uh, they're changing, uh, they're putting in um, traffic calming, uh, whatever the situation may be. If you feel that, you know, something's coming up on the agenda, you saw it in the media and you don't understand what's going on, reach out to your counselor. Reach out to your counselor to A, get an explanation of what's going on and B, understand that you have a say. So whether it's, you can, you can sign up to be a delegate up, up till Friday at, uh, three o'clock and even up until Monday at noon, we've accepted all the delegates, you know, any late delegates and even some people who have tried to sign on right before the meeting starts, we have always expect, um, accepted delegates who wanted to speak to an item. So you can always come and have your say. Um, but it's important to talk to your counselor and to talk to, to lots of counselor, depending on the issue, before the meeting, because we do a lot of preparation. I mean, you saw that agenda was three, 400 pages. The agenda uh, for Monday's meeting, Monday, May 4th, I believe is over 1,100 pages. So we're reading for days and days ahead of time. We're meeting, we're talking to administration, getting some ideas. So by the time Friday, Saturday comes around for a Monday meeting, we may already have an idea of how we're going to vote. If you come in on the la in the last minute and say, "Well, this isn't acceptable," you know, there's so many of us that are against this. That's coming, you know, that's sideswiping us with information, and we would like to know that ahead of time. So, if you can send out emails, calls, start with your own ward counselor, bring the issue forward, and then see what help he or she may want, to, uh, you know, may guide you with, and then look at what needs to be done. And don't ever hesitate to reach out. Um, even if it's something like following along on the agenda or something like that, don't ever hesitate to reach out. Um, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, I'm on Instagram, uh, email. You can reach out and ask, you know, basically what's going on this Monday? What's up with this issue? Can you give me a clarification of what's on this issue? A lot of times the media don't get it fully right or don't get the details fully right. So it's important to ask those questions and make sure you're, you're fully uh, informed. So uh, thank you everyone uh, for committing. I don't know how long this is ending up being, but I appreciate your time on this. Um, and again, any feedback that you have would be greatly appreciated. Um, any questions, anything that I missed, anything that, that seems like it didn't make sense, or again, I'm looking at it through my lens where I'm now five, five and a half years into this, 
it's easy to to digest and understand. If, if there was something I overlooked or went over really quickly, just send me a question, whether it be right on the Facebook post um, or even in, in an email. So appreciate your time. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you soon.